Back then, the Oregonian as a sideline used to print books, and they gave me the best bid. So I was up here in Portland. The series had been on the air for two or, th two or three segments, three segments by then. We had 5,000 orders from three segments in San Francisco, just, just in San Francisco. And I'm up there, we're working on getting the, you know, back then it was not desktop publishing, it was a whole process to making a book. And they get a call and they say, send our check back to the TV station that had paid for all this. And I get back and I see that the remaining show segments have the book advertisement taken off the end. And that the 120 PBS stations that had signed up to air the show after its premiere in San Francisco were denied the series. They weren't allowed to have it. And I finally got, after weeks, finally got through to one of the board members of, of KQG. And he said, well, it's really simple, Dave. We get lots of money from Chevron now, and they called up Tony, the director, and said, what's wrong? You don't like our money? And that's all it took, one phone call. You know, If this book would have come out in 1983 like it was scheduled to, we would not have been in Gulf War I. We wouldn't be in Iraq today. We wouldn't need any of that oil. You know, We just wouldn't need it. And we would have tens of millions of jobs in the United States in rural areas where they're needed making fuel for this country. And, you know, I gotta tell you, even though I'm telling my own story, I'm gonna tell you a quick aside. We've spent $320 billion already in Iraq. We use 160 billion gallons of alcohol a year, or gasoline a year. It costs a dollar per gallon of capacity to build alcohol plants. So for $160 billion, we can build enough plants to make all the alcohol we need to replace all the gasoline with half of what we've already spent in Iraq. And it never would stop. We'd keep producing year after year. If you look at the U.S. military budget, it's $500 billion a year. That we know about. That we know about. Well, it might be a trillion, but the published figure is $500 billion. The, United, the world uses... 500 billion gallons of fuel a year. If we just decided to shut down the war machine for one year and took that money and built alcohol plants in every country that were producing all the food that anybody would ever need, what would there be left to fight over? One year. That's all it would take. It's not going to happen. We have to do it. Okay? We can do it. There's nothing about this that's rocket science. This is moonshining. This is mankind's second oldest profession. <laughs> we can do this. Cars are already sold by Detroit that run on alcohol or gas or any mixture. Any, we didn't get into conversion, but any gasoline car can be converted to run on alcohol for a few hundred dollars. We can do this. So are you allowed to make alcohol in You're allowed to make up to 5,000 gallons on a free permit from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, but several of you can share the same still and each have your own permit. So we could do this on a neighborhood level and have farmers doing CSA growing fuel? And the, the concept we're promoting in the book, because I was a CSA farmer for 10 years, everybody know what that is? No. A CSA farmer is takes subscriptions. Instead of borrowing money from the bank to pay for all the inputs, grow the crop, deliver it to a terminal, and wait 60 days to get paid by the corporation, a CSA farmer contracts with a group of people to provide their food. And each one of them pays in advance for their food, which is when the farmer needs the money, and through the year, they get a box of food every week from the farm. And in this way, farmers are getting full retail with no middlemen, and they can make a living doing this on small acreage. And I fed 450 people in 150 shares, 150 boxes, every week, 48 weeks a year in California, because we have a short winter. Um, piece of cake, made plenty of money. The average corn farmer makes $50 an acre. I made $100,000 on two acres. So I think when it comes to farming, I, I have some room to talk. So the point is, the point is, if we do community supported energy, and we have obviously opportunity to do community supported other kinds of food than vegetables here, we can just transform the system. So if a bunch of you got together and contracted with a farmer that had some acreage to grow your sugar beets and make your alcohol, 
and delivered it to a station in town that she could all fill up at, this is not complicated. This is all doable, and it's all in the new book. So I want to say a little bit about this. The, uh, the book that I've been working on for three years, it's just kind of amazing that alcohol is being talked about right when my book's coming out. I think, you know, my guardian angel is working with me here. But basically, the whole book was completely rewritten. It, it cost over a quarter million dollars to do it. We had a staff of four people working on research, and I traveled around the world to do it. And the new book explores this model on several levels. Um, and of course, detailed everything that we've been talking about tonight and far more about conversion and everything else. The whole project has been done without taking any corporate money. And we've taken no foundation money and no alcohol industry money. This whole project has been funded. Thank you. This whole project has been funded by individuals, about 30 people, who've put up money, uh, loans, for this project, which they'll get repaid out of the book sales, and we have to sell about $7,500 to pay back the lenders, which, I don't know, if we're talking about making alcohol for 43 cents a gallon, I don't think we're out of trouble selling 7,500 books. Um, so we now have enough money. We, we had a publisher, progressive publisher, thought we were all, all set. And as we got to editing, the publisher started saying, no, that's too controversial, that's too controversial. And so we said, we're not going down this road again. We've, we did this with KQED, we're not doing it. So we're itself, having to self-publish it. It's already through editing now, in the next week, goes to layout, proofreading, indexing, and then printing, hopefully by September. And we don't have the print budget yet. We still need to raise 20000 to print the first 3,000 books. It's about $6 to print the 550-page book that it'll be. So if any of you are interested or know someone who would be interested in becoming part of our group of lenders to make this thing get out on time in September, please get a hold of me. Um, I'm Farmer Dave at permaculture.com if you want to write to me. And with that, i got to tell you one thing. You are not innocent anymore. You now know what to do. And all you need to do is to get organized. So Portland Peak Oil is a great place to start organizing to get your first station going, buying alcohol from co-op producers in the Midwest that are producing 100 million gallons per year, and then work on getting a local farmer to produce your fuel. But start with converting your cars and getting your alcohol purchased, which you can do right now. You know? Converting the car, do you need a new carburetor, or can you use your real carburetor if your carburetor is uh, You can just alter your carburetor. All the instructions are in the book. Cool. So. Everything you'll need is in the book starting in September, but you can get started right now organizing yourself. You don't have to wait. So you can't say in the future, oh, woe is me, the government's raising, you know, going to war and it's raising the gas prices and isn't it terrible? You can't, you don't, you don't have talking room anymore. You now know what an answer is and you can do something about it. So I can only do what I can do. I know what my assignment is. My assignment was to write the book and go around telling people about this, but it's up to you to go ahead and start replacing petroleum in your community. In, in Wisconsin, every dollar spent on gasoline, all but 12 cents leaves the state the next day for a transnational corporation. The alcohol that's sold in that state, by the way, there are 600 alcohol stations in the United States, mostly in the Midwest. When alcohol is sold for fuel, 67% of the money stays in the state and it's spent over and over again by the people in that state, generating far more tax benefits than the few subsidies you get. Oh, I didn't tell you about that. When you make your own alcohol for a buck a gallon, you get to take 61 cents a gallon off your taxes for every gallon you produce. It's a credit, not a deduction. Deduction comes off your income, credits come off your tax. So you can make it for a dollar a gallon, but you really only end up paying 40 cents. So anyway, um, I'll, I'll stick around. I'll ask, you, I'll ask you a couple of questions, and then I'll stick around. Um, are there any stations uh, in the Portland area? Or? There are no stations I know about yet in Oregon, but the state is working on making that more possible. But any place with a good parking lot, for instance, in permaculture, we're always looking at cycles, you know. And there's a really great parking lot that every community has that's available.